do you guys like bows? Do you guys like men who use bows being bow men? Did you guys like Bowman from Black Ops 1 and get really sad when he died? Yeah, me too. But anyway, it's your boy Prolapse Nanus, and today we're going to be doing a challenge in Dark Souls 3 where we try to beat the whole game only using a bow. And to start off this challenge, we pick the only character that starts with a bow, and we quickly get to the first boss, and it already sucks because you only start out with 30 arrows, and that is enough, but it's barely enough. You're a rat bastard. So if you miss one or two, three times, then it's back to the character creation. And trust me, I had to start over a lot. But after about 10 attempts, he yeed his last haul, and we did manage to beat him with zero arrows to spare, and my heart rate could finally go back to a normal rate. But after that, we light the fire, buy an ass ton of arrows, and head out to find some materials. And unlike with my fist only run, I can actually fight regular enemies, because during the fist only run, I pretty much just run past everything, because everything was a threat. But in this one, I can actually kind of hold my own, except for enemies with shields. They're still my biggest threat right now. Then I had this epic quickscope battle, which nobody won. And then I unlocked a shortcut to the next boss, but before I attempted, I wanted to level up my bow a couple times, so I needed another shard. So I spent a few minutes looking for one, and I actually found a better bow, and then another shard a few minutes later. Also, I just want to say that I have beat this game multiple times, but I am by no means an expert. Like, I don't remember where most of the good stuff is or anything without having to look it up. So if there's some, like, super secret combo that you get for cutting the dragon's balls off that kills enemies in one load, I wouldn't know about it. But anyway, I went to upgrade the new bow, and this happened. Nothing personal. It's just revenge. But after that, we make it to the second boss, and I already know it's going to be easy because I remember my training from the fist only video, so it's going to be a piece of cake. Okay, but for real, this boss wasn't actually too bad. It did take me a few tries to remember his patterns, but he actually lets you get a ton of free shots in as he just slowly walks towards you. It is a little intimidating the way he's just taking all these arrows to his face or neck thing or whatever, and he just doesn't seem phased at all, but it's definitely worth it. And during his second phase, it is definitely a lot harder because he keeps charging you, but when he charges up his ice attack, that's your chance to get a ton of free shots in. So this fight was relatively easy, about a 3 out of 10 on difficulty. Then it suddenly occurred to me, do bows have weapon arts? And by golly gee, they do. I wonder if that would have been helpful. But we make it to the next area and I waste like 90% of my arrows taking out this giant group right here for no reason. And I think headshots do something? Yes, they do. But after that, I do actually run out of arrows, so I do what every great Dark Souls player has done before, and just run straight through everything. Then I end up wasting like 50 arrows on this guy before I give up and lose my embers so I can pick up this other ember, then I fall really hard. Then me and the old Onion Knight kill this boss in a totally fair and legit way, and then I accidentally sent this dog to the Shadow Realm. And then we make our way down the elevator, kill this guy in a totally legit and fair way, and then we move on to the next section. And once we're here, I just run straight past the birds because fuck them, that's why. And then this lady throws her feces at me for free when I know some guys would pay a pretty penny for that kind of treatment. But we finally make it to the next boss, being the Crystal Sage, and surprisingly, this boss was a huge pain in the ass. Normally, this is one of the easiest bosses in the game. It was even easier on my fist only run, but with a bow, I was just too slow on the draw, and he always seems to hit me before I could hit him. So what I ended up doing was just hiding behind this corner, and it worked pretty well, but it's still super annoying because you're going to have to stand here for like 5-10 to 10 minutes in first person mode, just shooting him over and over and over until you get to the end and realize you ran out of arrows. And then you do it all again, but you suck a little less this time. And it still doesn't work. So you go back, see if you can buy a crossbow, realize you already have one in your inventory and feel kind of dumb. And then you go back, do as much damage as you can with the crossbow before, and then you go back to the corner and take out the rest of the damage with the bow. Try not to get your arrows stuck in the ice. All in all, this fight actually sucked really bad. 7 out of 10, not even kidding. After all that fun, I go to level up a couple times, then upgrade my bow, then realize I upgraded the wrong bow. Oh, lost my ember. Then we use some epic gamer strats to kill this lady. Man, I could just not stop coming up with these epic strategies. Then I send another enemy to the Shadow Realm, and at this point, I'm just scared of myself. And this guy blocking arrows with his arm. 
But after that, we make our way over to the Deacons of the Deep, and I don't know what I was thinking. I definitely need to be a higher level for this, because I'm just not doing enough damage to even kill one of them. So for now, we just head towards the Abyss Watchers, and we get the pleasure of running around the swamp, grabbing a bunch of items. But we end up turning in this ash, and I get a new bow. It is a little weaker than the long bow, but it's stronger than the short bow, and you can still do a quick shot after a roll with the composite bow, so that makes it worth it to me, especially since we're about to fight the Abyss Watchers, and I feel like I'm really going to need that. Also, she had some new arrows, but the cost really didn't seem worth the extra damage. But that also reminded me of Grey Rat and that he probably has some arrows. So I went to go pick him up and it also reminded me that I can kill the giant for the Hawk Ring, which that'll extend my range. So that's definitely going to be worth it. But I would never kill my best friend. But luckily he died from COVID. And it was definitely worth it to get Grey Rat because he has stronger arrows and they're pretty cheap. So with the new arrows and a new bow, we head straight for the Abyss Watchers. But first, we have to take care of the Stray Demon real quick. I said, but first, we have to take care of the Stray Demon real quick. There we go. But now we make it to the Abyss Watchers, and a huge surprise is that it really wasn't that hard. I actually got halfway through the second phase on my first try and beat him on my third try. It was a really good thing that I switched bows because it was basically essential for me to have that quick shot after the roll ability to beat them because that was like 90% of my attacks. I pretty much just used my crappy arrows for the first phase, and then I would try to remember to switch to my better arrows in the second phase, but as you can probably see, I didn't do it to like pretty much the very end of the fight. And I decided to use an ember for this fight because he basically one-shot me in the last one. But overall, it was actually a pretty fun boss fight to do with a bow. 3 out of 10 on difficulty, but definitely very fun. And after that, we head back to the shrine to see what Grey Rat brought us because I sent him out to pillage before and he did bring us some better arrows, but at this point in the game, I still don't think the price is worth it. Now we make our way to the catacombs, but first we gotta put on some new drip. And the first thing I did was trick the skeleton into unaliving himself. <laughs> but other than that, nothing really interesting happened, so we just ran straight to the High Lord himself. And he was super easy. I tried a range tactic at first, but that didn't really work so well because I just kept getting hit. So I just stayed really close to him and just kept shooting his bracelets and that somehow worked better with the bow. After a while, he will call his skeletons though and that does make it a little bit harder, but even with them, it's still not that hard. And even when he does pull a sword out, it's still not that hard even then. And I'm betting some of you is probably their first time seeing the skeletons or the sword because it was my first time when I did my fist only run. But once again, another easy boss, another three out of 10. Okay, now to get to the next section, all we have to do is cut the bridge down. We have to cut it down. Shit. Okay, maybe I can get a skeleton to do it. No, that didn't work. Let me just try shooting it a whole bunch. No. Okay, guys, I've wasted like over 30 arrows on this. I don't think it's possible. No fucking way. Good shit, good shit. And now we can head to Smoldering Lake, but first I gotta kill this guy in a totally fair and respectable way. Then we take out this giant STD snake, and then we go take out this abomination of game design up here. And now it's large titanite city, baby. And after that, we go level up our bow with all our new titanite shards and finish up in Smoldering Lake by killing the old Demon King on our first try. He's actually really, really, really easy because the arena is just so big and you can get so far away and he moves so slow and you can just keep getting distance and keep firing. I did get hit by his little ground fire attack once or twice, not because it was hard to avoid, but just because it just spreads so far away, even when you are at a good distance, you're still going to get hit by it. But he's pretty much not a threat at all if you're doing a bow only run, 1 out of 10. And after that, I think it's about time to pay the deacons another visit, and I do get a lot closer, but I'm still not quite there yet, so I just head over to the Cursed Rotten Greatwood to make myself feel better. And I kill him first try, so yeah, that worked. Nothing to really say about him. He was super easy. It probably would have been harder if it was earlier in the game, but definitely a 1 out of 10. Okay, so once again, back to the Deacons for the final time. And as you can guess, it was still incredibly hard. Because of the huge crowd, it just makes it really hard to get your arrows through everybody to actually hit the boss. And since the Deacons are actually really easy most of the time, most of you probably don't know. If you don't kill them fast enough, I believe it's within 8 minutes, they will actually curse you and it's an automatic death. You can't do anything about it. So that definitely makes it harder with the bow because you can't really do a lot of damage really all that fast. But after about 10 attempts, it finally worked and I was able to finish them off. Surprisingly, the Deacons, just like the Sage, usually being one of the easiest bosses, was one of the hardest bosses in this run. Probably a 6 out of 10. So after that, I go back to Grey Rat to buy some more arrows and I accidentally make a huge mistake. And I basically sent my arrow dealer to his death. But I'm pretty sure I can fix it, so I look up his quest, and it turns out you need patches to save him. But me and patches are not on the best of terms right now. So I look up if you can un-aggro an enemy in Dark Souls 3, and you can, so great. But I do have to buy a key, which is only 1500 so not bad. 
And then I find the lady in question, and it's 44,000 fucking souls. And at this point, I really don't even know if it's going to work because I already sent him out and I don't know if you have to do this kind of stuff before you send him or not. But okay, now all I need to do is go get patches. And as it turns out, he is in the tower and we need to spend another 20,000 souls to get him. Grey Rat is probably mangled into a thousand pieces right now, you inconsiderate fuck. But at this point, I was pretty over it and I remembered that I had a save from before the Deacons. So I just load up my save, do a few more things I already did, kill the Deacons again, and just continue the game like I never had done this in the first place. But after all that, we make our way to the Boreal Valley and we take out this dog thing in a very fair and respectable way. And nothing too interesting really happens in this level until we make it to Pontiff. And Pontiff was actually pretty tough. He's definitely not one of the hardest, but he's kind of like some of the other bosses where he'll just slowly walk towards you and just let you pelt him with a bunch of arrows. But he's also one of the only bosses that I've noticed will actively try to avoid my arrows. Like, he actually tries to dodge him. He's literally the only one I've seen do that. But once we make it to the second phase, it gets a little bit trickier. But we did the same thing we did with the Abyss Watchers. So whenever he would attack me, I would just do a roll, a quick shot, and then run away. And just repeat that until he's dead. But after about six or seven attempts on this boss, I got him down. I'd probably give him a five out of ten. Not the hardest, but not the easiest either. When you hit them with that dollar store arrow versus when they hit you with that Gucci Supreme arrow. But after some more shenanigans, we make it to Aldridge, and man, this is definitely one of the toughest fights so far. This one took me hours to get past her. The first phase was pretty easy. I would just dodge roll and just run up on her and keep shooting her before she could even get a chance to attack me half the time. But the second phase is when it gets crazy. She becomes a lot more aggressive, and she's constantly sending magic balls at you the whole time, so you're always trying to roll, and you can never get time to shoot off an arrow. But the absolute worst part of this fight is when she shoots her own arrows at you, and she just rains them down from above you, and I almost always get hit by this move every single time, and every single one of my deaths came from this exact move. And I don't hate a lot of moves in this game from bosses, but her arrow move and Osiris's charge attack are the only two moves in this game that actually make me want to scream. But after a while, I did remember that in my fist only run, the way I beat her was just I had to run up on her as fast as possible so she wouldn't use her arrows. And that's exactly what I did this time, and it actually worked just as well. It made it so much easier. So that was a tough one, 8 out of 10. And after all that, we make our way to the dungeon where I decide to kill another giant just for the thrill of it. And then we quickly make our way over to Yorm the Giant. And he is obviously a pain in the ass, as you can guess, because he has so much health and I can't use the proper weapon. But he's really not that difficult. He just takes a really long time. I did manage to beat him my first try, but I'm still just going to give him a 4 out of 10 just for the amount of time it takes. And after that, we just head straight for the Dancer. And the Dancer really wasn't too bad at all. It only took me about three tries. All you really have to do is just keep your distance, only fire after they do a combo. And the second phase, while it is definitely more difficult and they are a lot faster, it's still definitely doable. Not a whole lot to say about the Dancer. Pretty average boss so far. Probably 4 out of 10. I like how my arms are literally just consumed by this armor. After that, I decided I would try to go take on the Consumed King, and it did not go well. I died about 15 times before I decided to go hunt for some Titanite chunks, and and I took out the dragons and finally started dumping some points into my vitality and does anyone know why killing this one dragon makes the other one die? I never really figured that out. Pretty sure the fire link lady just cringed at me. But next up on the boss list is the dragon slayer armor and I was really afraid for this fight because I figured my arrows would do a really tiny amount of damage due to him having like really good armor or he would just constantly block all my arrows with his shield but neither of those were really the case. Honestly, it was a pretty decent fight, probably one of the most fun with a bow only. It really felt like a proper duel. Definitely one of the most structured fights where I really felt like we were just taking turns doing attacks, which personally made it a lot easier because he made him very predictable and made him very easy to avoid most of his attacks. I almost beat him on my first try, but then he knocked me off of a cliff. But then I beat him on my third try, and like I said, definitely super fun, but it wasn't really all that difficult. Probably a 3 out of 10. And the next up on the list is the Twin Princes, but first we go and we find ourselves a slab, and then we head to the Twin Princes. And this was definitely one of the hardest fights in this run. The first phase wasn't too difficult like most of them, but I never really mastered it like I usually do. 
But the second phase is ridiculously hard because you have to constantly dodge his magic just like Aldrich. But this guy can teleport right next to you. And he does constantly. Definitely not an ideal fight for a bow user. I tried to just stay really close to him just to dodge his attacks and get a quick shot off. But that never worked for me because he would always hit me with something. And I'm really, really, really bad at telling what move he's about to do after a teleport. Because he has a few different ones but I can never tell which one he's going to do. But the gods must have answered my prayers because something kind of funny happened in this run very similar to something that happened in my fist only run where the boss just suddenly stopped attacking me after like the 30th try so i get to the second phase and i prepared for him to teleport right next to me or something so i'm waiting for that and just nothing nothing happens i'm staring at him and he's just staring off into the distance so of course me being a man of honor i immediately loaded 30 arrows into his spine and actually wondered what would happen to the other one since i still hadn't done any damage to him when he had a full health bar but he dies too immediately so thank you dark souls and i mean it this time 7 out of 10. Probably a 9 if I didn't get lucky. And after that success, we head straight back to the Consumed King, and this time we had a lot more success. It was definitely still a pretty difficult fight, especially the second phase. First phase is easy enough, you can just keep your distance, and a lot of the time he'll just slowly walk towards you like a lot of the other bosses, and you can just get a bunch of shots off on him. But in the second phase, since his moves are so sporadic, it can make it really hard to actually land an arrow on him. If all my arrows would actually land, this fight would have been 10 times easier. And like I said before, I only hate two moves in this game. One was Aldridge's arrows, and two is this charge attack that Osiris does, because it just seems like it can just come out of nowhere sometimes and just if you're touching him boom there goes 90 percent of your health so i really wanted to try to avoid standing right next to him or under him but that was definitely the easiest strategy for me because i would just stand right in front of him dodge his attack and get a quick shot off and i was really good at dodging most of his attacks except for that charge one and i got so excited when i finally beat him that i completely forgot to record the footage because i have brain damage but I did go back to an old save, come back to him, beat him most of the way with a sword, and then just finished him off with the bow just so I had the footage. Because I was not about to do that fight again with a bow. 9 out of 10. Huge pain in the ass. And our grand prize for finally beating Osiris is we get to fight Gundir again, which was surprisingly harder. Like, way harder. Probably one of the hardest fights in this run. I really didn't remember having that much trouble with him on my fist only run, but that's probably because I was able to parry him really well because I was practicing that a lot at the time. But I tried that and I just could not pull it off. The first phase, like most of them, was super easy. I was actually able to even do it without him touching me a couple times, but the second phase is impossible with the bow. He will be constantly rushing you down, never giving you one inch to breathe or heal or shoot an arrow or anything. For the second phase, there ended up literally being only one move that I was able to shoot him reliably, and it wasn't even that reliable. I would still get hit a handful of times, and this was just definitely the most frustrating part. He has so many different combos. Wait, did I just say fart? This was definitely one of the most frustrating fights in this entire run. He just has so many different combos, so many moves, so many attacks, so many everything. It just makes it so impossible to ever get a shot off. The only time I could ever hit him was when he did his charging spear attack, and I would roll off to the side and get a shot off and just run away, run in circles the entire time. This was probably the longest fight. And I remember the first time I got really, really, really close after like 15 minutes, a fly flew in my ear and I smacked myself in the face and then I died and I had never been so angry in my whole life. But eventually, I was finally able to do it, and I started this fight with 400 arrows in my inventory, and I ended up with 65. 10 out of 10. Not gonna lie, I completely forgot about the Ancient Wyvern, but luckily you can just stand up here and just keep shooting him until he's dead, which is currently what I'm doing as I am typing these notes that I'm speaking to you right now because it's taking so long. And now we finally get to the one a lot of you have probably been waiting for, the Nameless King. And I knew this fight was going to be tough, but I didn't know it was going to be this tough. For some reason, I probably had a harder time doing this fight with a bow only than I did with my fist only, but that's probably because it takes a lot longer to fire one arrow than it does just to punch once and run away. I probably did this fight about 20 to 30 times, and almost every time I was able to beat the first phase super easy, and then I would almost immediately die on the second phase. But what I started trying to do was just get some distance between us to see how he would react to that, and it was actually working super well. He, just like a lot of other bosses, he would just walk slowly towards you for no reason, just while you're firing a ton of arrows at him, he just does not care. It definitely made this fight way easier. You still do have to dodge his shockwaves, but that can be pretty easily timed. 
I decided to switch to my longbow after I discovered that because I knew I wouldn't have to do any quick shots or anything and the longbow is still a little bit stronger than the composite bow when they're both fully upgraded. I would have used the Dragon Slayer bow, but I didn't have enough upgrade materials to really make it worth it. And since I figured out a pretty easy way to kill him with the bow, I'm gonna have to give him a 5 out of 10. I probably would have gave him a 9 if I didn't discover how to do this, or maybe even a 10. And now, we finally make it to the Soul of Cinder. And he was... just... just so freaking easy. I actually beat him on my first try, I'm not even kidding. I couldn't even decide which phase was harder because they were both so easy. All you really have to do is just keep your distance and keep getting shots off every time he finishes a combo or an attack and then just roll away and he probably won't even try to hit you. And once you're far away, just like most of the other bosses, he'll slowly walk towards you while you get a bunch of shots off. But to be fair, he doesn't do it nearly as much as other bosses do. If I had to pick one, I would say the easiest part is when he's doing his magic phase because you pretty much just stand there taking turns firing stuff at each other and he would pretty much miss every time and I would pretty much hit him every time. And he loves doing this jump attack that's just so easy to dodge and just roll, shoot, run away, repeat. The only part I kind of struggled with is then later in the fight when he starts doing his lightning in the air attack when he rains it down on you. I did get hit by that a couple times, but that's just because I suck at this game. But other than that, this boss was a piece of cake. Possibly one of the easiest in this run. I would say a 4 out of 10, and that's probably being a little bit generous just because he's the last boss and I would never disrespect him like that. But that's it. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I did have a lot of fun making this challenge, even though it was definitely frustrating at some times, but it was definitely one of the most fun ones I've done. Some of the bosses were definitely pretty surprising, like the Sage and the Deacons were definitely the dark horses of this run. I did not expect to have that much of an issue with them. I'm working on some Devil May Cry challenges right now, and I'm trying to get better with every video I make with my delivery and my editing skills and just everything that goes into it. So if you want to see some future videos, maybe like and hit the subscribe button if you think I deserve it. But that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one.